So personally, one of the things that I've been wanting to really dive into, but I wasn't sure if there was enough interest to really dive into it, uh, is the world of fat adaptation, ketogenic protocols, uh, exogenous ketone supplementation, and higher altitude training. I personally live at 7,000 feet for about half of the year or so, and I've noticed some very specific things, which I'll get to in just a minute. I mean, I guess I'll, I'll quickly recap them. I noticed that I adapt really fast, I acclimate really fast. I noticed that I have very little uh, period of time before I'm up to snuff as far as aerobic capacity goes. Uh, I feel like my anaerobic conditioning stays really strong, and I just feel overall I don't, I don't get any sense of that brain fogginess I might have otherwise gotten. So when I told Dom D'Agostino that this morning, <laughs> He had an interesting uh, bunch of words for me on it. Apparently, it's a real thing. So, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm glad you brought it up uh, because over the last ten years, I've gotten quite a few people interested in this topic and sending me uh, anecdotal reports of them once they follow a ketogenic diet or use exogenous ketones that their performance and their overall subjective feeling is significantly enhanced you know at altitude and the accumulation of these anecdotal reports and also people within the military kind of doing this uh, kind of on a whim but with maybe some support behind it is, has actually stimulated quite a bit of research in in the department of defense and things like that and uh, I won't talk too much about that, but I'll just say that there's a lot of research ongoing in this area right now, and it looks very promising. And we do know that carbohydrate supplements, glucose supplements consumed uh, under hypoxic conditions at altitude have little or no effect, uh, or maybe even a negative effect, on enhancing performance under hypoxia. So glucose and carbohydrate uh, supplements are actually, and the keto community might like this, are actually a very good ergogenic aid when you're at ambient uh, levels, like one atmosphere. But under hypoxia, for reasons we don't fully understand, but we think that under hypoxic conditions, there's impaired glucose metabolism. It's either glucose transport or a decrease in glycolytic enzymes, maybe pyruvate dehydrogenase, uh, maybe hexokinase or something. We don't know, but what we do know is that carbohydrate supplements just don't have any performance enhancing benefit. And military operators and you know many people who are need to perform at altitude need to have <laughs> a yeah. supplement that could that could maintain or we, we uh, it, it's really important to talk about this in terms of not so much performance enhancement, but resilience. Yeah. So we want something that could bring our performance, cognitive and physical, back to normal levels under hypoxic uh, environments. And ketones seem to have a really good track record for doing that because it bypasses uh, the GLUT1 transporter, glucose transporter, it also bypasses pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, which may be inhibited under hypoxic conditions. And uh, it's actually, if you have a disorder called PDH deficiency, it's the standard of care for that because metabolically it can bypass that. So, and we know from previous work, for example, like in a, a working heart preparation, that you can generate ATP at a level at less oxygen with when you're fueling the preparation with ketones relative to glucose. So that could be like an important aspect. Um, so there's quite a bit of anecdotal reports and some science to indicate that under hypoxic conditions, there may be a significant advantage to fueling the body off ketones and likely fatty acids. Uh, so metabolically switching your body to that fat adapted state could be favorable for a number of, of reasons. Today, after this video, you can save 30% off your entire grocery order through Thrive Market. That means if you go out and you wanna load up your grocery cart with $500 worth of food, you'll save 30% off of it. They're an online grocery store that everything just gets delivered to your doorstep, but you can sort by diet category. It's the coolest, easiest thing that I've seen in a long time when it comes down to healthy grocery shopping. So right now with food prices the way they are, things getting expensive, gas being crazy expensive, I'm really all about ordering my food and getting it delivered to my doorstep, okay? So it makes things just way simpler for me. So Thrive Market, using that link, you save 30% off your entire grocery order, plus it's foods that I endorse and condone because they really are better for you options. So highly recommend it. That link will save you 30% off, plus you get a $50 free gift when you check them out. So use that link down below. 
So is it, it's probably not safe to say, but one could almost elucidate that even without necessarily going on a ketogenic diet, you could almost say that being in a hypoxic situation at high altitude, you are simply not utilizing carbohydrates as well. I mean, you you noticed it with carbohydrate supplementation, and I know it's a big leap to say, so I'm saying it, not you. Could, it, could that possibly be the case that we're actually literally less efficient at utilizing glucose at altitude, and that could be some of the issue? Yeah, so there, there appears to be, uh, you know, carbohydrate intolerance associated with hypoxia. And we do know that hypoxia activates things like HIF-1-alpha, and we know from cancer research, and HIF-1-alpha can activate glycolytic pathways, but it, it doesn't seem to happen in a normal healthy subject who's trying to adapt their physiology and their muscle physiology to hypoxia because carbohydrate supplements just don't seem to help. So this has been known for some time, so there's been quite a, a bit of research to uh, augment metabolic control under hypoxic conditions to enhance performance and, and cognitive performance too. So ketones seem to, they're metabolized in a way that circumvents many of the metabolic pathways that could be impaired under hypoxic conditions. And this has become the rationale for a number of different projects that are currently funded and we'll have to see what happens with the data that evolves out of this project with the essential hypothesis being that uh, acute ketosis or keto adaptation can enhance performance resilience, uh, physical or cognitive performance resilience, you know, in hypoxia. And so that would be not only just a low oxygen, but low barometric pressure. So what we call, uh, you know, uh, altitude. You know, there's you can create hypoxia simply by lowering the PO2, or, or also by uh, decreasing the barometric pressure too. So there's different model systems, and research is being done in the context of both of those situations. So uh, I've been kind of keyed into it and trying to keep up on on top of this uh, because I know personally, after experimenting with ketosis and actually experimenting with fasting and fasting for seven days. I could increase my breath hold time underwater from approximately two minutes to, f to like four minutes, wow. which is unheard of. And uh, like I mentioned this to, to a number of different people who went, and many people try to do the same thing that I do. <laughs> like when I mentioned, and I think I mentioned it maybe on like a Tim Ferriss podcast or something like that. Other people did it, and then I get dozens if not hundreds of emails of people trying things and I don't tell them to try it because you don't want to be holding your, you, you want someone there watching you if you're trying to do a breath hold. But, uh, but enough reports have come back to me to suggest that yes, being in a fasted state or being in ketosis or even taking exogenous ketones can increase your, your breath hold time. So there's different reasons that people, it could be, you know, you could be decreased. The drive to breathe is actually, actually not hypoxia. The drive to breathe is actually an elevation of CO2. So we have CO2 chemoreceptors at the ventral surface of the medulla. And when CO2 levels rise, that tells us to breathe. And then we have the carotid bodies at the bifurcation of the common carotid artery that actually sense oxygen too. And they are a stimulus, but not nearly as big a stimulus as the CO2 chemoreceptors, which we know are all throughout the brain, but mostly at the ventral surface. So there seems to be a very interesting relationship with being in ketosis and CO2 chemoreceptor sensitivity, meaning that um, CO2 chemoreceptor receptor sensitivity may be augmented in the context of ketosis that could allow us to comfortably hold our breath longer. And I think another thing that's going on is that the metabolic efficiency of our brain and our physiology in the context of ketosis is more efficient. So I think you have two things going on there, but whatever it is, it's very significant. So it has implications for people who are free diving. So the free diving community is very interested in this. Uh, diving community in general, but also people at altitude who are trying to optimize and capitalize off oxygen metabolism, <laughs> you know, to maintain their performance. No, so. that's very intriguing. And I guess at a, at a simple level, what I had chalked it up to, you know, is I've seen some research on uh, essentially having, uh, being able to utilize fat at possibly a, a slightly higher percentage of your max heart rate when you're in ketosis. Like it's like you're, you're just a subtle amount. So I started thinking, okay, maybe this is, maybe this is what's going on by me being able to 
um, you know, utilize, be more, like, for lack of a better term, more efficient at utilizing oxygen through like conditioned beta oxidation because I do it all the time and because I'm yeah. like so adapted. Um, sounds like this is just a, an extension of that. I mean, yes, because that was just kind of my theory. It's all like all I had to chalk it up to. I just didn't uh, didn't know what else. I think that's a factor there too. Also, when I fasted for seven days and did the breath hold experiment, when you fast for that period of that amount of time, your overall metabolic rate goes down, right? So, like uh, David sure, Blaine's yeah. an example, right? Yeah. So he did, you know, and and people who try to do the world record for you know holding their breath, they know it's like this trick that if you fast, then your metabolism goes down, like T3 goes down, thyroid goes down, and overall metabolic rate goes down, and then CO2 chemoreceptor their sensitivity is probably augmented and then your ketones are elevated so you have a synergy of a lot of different things and a major driver could be just decreasing your overall metabolic rate as you but but I mean that's not an insignificant thing going from doubling your breath hold time you know in, in a fasted uh, uh, a fasted ketogenic state is is pretty significant and has wide-ranging implications either you know for the sport of free diving but also for you know, many different sports that are done either underwater or in a, an altitude hypoxic environment. Well, then you factor in even the usability, right? Like with packing food, uh, you know, I've always, as a you know, mountaineer and backpacker, I, I look at that too as like yeah. how how light is my food. So I mean that's yeah. just a, a external that's factor a big, that's too, a big, right? Big factor. It's like yeah. If I can have, if I can carry nine calories per gram versus four calories per gram, you know, yep. in my backpack, I'm cutting my food weight in half exactly uh, so, and also being efficient at utilizing it you know so it, it's for me that's a that's a big piece so I try to look at all these so like without a doubt whenever I'm going to altitude or whenever I'm backpacking or doing anything like that it's like there's pretty much no exceptions I'm, I'm keto like that's you know and it's uh, it's interesting until talking to you about this I didn't understand that there was uh, some research going on in it so I wanted to keep this video shorter because uh, I know it's a more esoteric topic and it's going to be a, a specific kind of person that wants to watch it but I think yeah. uh, you know my takeaway from this is um, yeah being in a ketogenic state even better being in somewhat of a fasted state um, you know so the Lake Tahoe area where I uh, where I reside part of the time is there's a lot of uh, endurance events that go on there. There's you know triathlons, a lot of triathlons, a lot of ultra marathons, a lot of things like that. And uh, my sister, I don't want to you know bring her into the conversation without her really knowing too much. But she's you know she lives in Colorado, and she's I've been trying to convince her to do the keto diet for her for her various endurance events. She's done Kona. She's you know she's and uh, part of me is doing this video because I want to be able to show it to her that hey, there's some stuff going on. Like you really should look at this because it's uh, especially if you're pushing it for performance at altitude. I think this is where I find it because I I keep track of my performance quite a bit when I go up to altitude. But the interesting thing is that I don't have an explanation for and we can save it for another day is, uh, you know, I notice anaerobic uh, performance improving too. I actually mm -hmm. notice that I have better recovery between lifts uh, like when I'm, when I'm altitude too. So there's something, could be another piece going on there. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, recovery. So when you lift, you go into an oxygen debt, and you could probably reestablish homeostasis better if you're if you're keto adapted. I, I feel that too. Yeah. I definitely feel that. Interesting. Makes me want to get a uh, altitude chamber and just uh, train in that all the time. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, yeah. Do maybe you can get a hyperbaric chamber and reverse it. Hard chamber you can use as an altitude chamber and oh, stuff too. Okay. Yeah, but then I need someone to man it for me. I can't use yeah. a hard chamber by myself. That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Keel over and die in there. Yeah. No, anyway. All right. Well, as always, keep it locked here on my channel. And thanks to Dr. Don D'Agostino for yet another awesome video.